Hello everyone, this is Andy at Mall Tech ATV. Today I'm going to be making a short video of how to correctly measure your ATV before sending in your shop. Uh, just to start off with, a little about us. We're a full service ATV repair shop that specializes in ATV, ATV suspension and chassis setups for motocross, cross country, and PT setups. We're an authorized service and repair center. Uh, we do repair center for Fox Racing Shops, uh, Custom Axis Racing Shops, HLS with VP Thunder. We also do Elka, Olin's, and Longwood OEM and Factory Shops. Uh, we have an in-house shop dyno as well on site, as you can see here in the background. Uh, we have a full test area, and most of our stuff is all uh, from our testing is and current setups and products of years on hand testing and we also have many nationally ranked ATV racers that ride for us and give excellent input and that's for our future modifications and to help our customers get the best suspension there is. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to properly measure four critical measurements that we need in order to get your shocks working to their full potential. Uh, we will need these measurements when you're sending us your shocks to get them properly revalved or sprung. So these are the four critical measurements we're going to need. We're going to need one, we're going to need the rear race sag. Two, we're going to need the front and main spring height. So the height of your main front spring. Three, we're going to need the front and rear extended height. And we're going to need the front and rear compressed height. Or you could call these links, the front and rear extended link and the front and rear compressed link. So now we're going to go over and I'm going to switch over and show you pictures of exactly what I need and try to do some explaining while I'm doing that. We're going to go over these measurements um, and this is, a, this is really easy to do. Uh, so just bear with me and here we go. So this is the race sag measurement. This is going to be our first measurement. The first thing we need to do is we need to lift the rear tires off the ground. Now this first picture, it doesn't look like the tires are off the ground, but they are off the ground. We actually, uh, Dave that works for me, he raised the, lifted up on the rear grab bar, and we had the rear tires off the ground for this measurement. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to measure from the top of the axle straight up to any point on the subframe. Now for this, we're going to take, the, if you look at this picture, you can see the 17 inch mark on that top weld on the subframe. And, it, and the main thing is you want to have this directly above the axle. That is very important. Uh, on the next picture, you can see here that we are right setting the tape measure right on top of the axle. Simple as that. So we're going to take 17 inches as our first measurement. Our second measurement, we're going to put the bike down on the ground, and the rider is going to be standing on the foot pegs. And I need you to stand on the foot pegs, not set. If you're standing on the pegs, everyone stands on the pegs the same. Nobody sits on the bike the same. So I can't stress enough, stand on the foot pegs. I also can't stress enough to have the same person making the two measurements because they're going to measure to two different spots. So in this instance, we're going to take the reading of 9 inches. So we're just going to take our second measurement and subtract that from our first measurement. Simple as that. 17 inches minus 9 inches equals 8 inches of race sag. Now this race sag is, is high. I mean this would tell me right now that this rider is way too heavy for the spring. But this is just an instance and this is easy easy as that. First measurement, second measurement, and you subtract the second from the first. Our next measurement we're going to take is going to be our front main spring height just as it sounds. If you look at this first picture, we're going to take our main spring only height. We need the rider still standing on the foot pegs. 
So we're going to measure from the bottom of the spring all the way to the top of the spring. And in this measurement, you can see it's 7 inches. That's all that we need. For our third measurement, we're going to need the front and rear extended lengths. Now, we're going to recommend that you raise the bottom of the frame 12 inches off the ground for motocross and cross country racing. We're going to remove all three shocks also. As you can see, we actually have an aluminum stand that we have made that, that does three different measurements. Um, also, TT racing, which this bike is set up for TT, we're going to want a measurement of 9.25 inches off the ground. As you can see in this next picture, we've got our, our stand underneath the bike. All three socks are removed off the bike. And the bike is level. The frame is level to the ground, completely horizontal to the ground. All right, so we're going to take our extended front height measurement or our length our front length measurement and as you can see in this picture we're measuring from eye to eye where those shocks mount with the bike 12 inches off the ground for motocross or cross country or it's going to be nine and a quarter inches for TT racing you can see here we're taking the measurement from the top shock eyelet all the way in the next picture to the bottom shock eyelet where the shock mounted. We call this eye to eye. This measurement is 16.25 inches. Then we're going to go to the back of the, of the ATV and we're going to measure the rear's extended length. Again, we're going to take from the top shock eyelet to the bottom shock eyelet where it mounts to the linkage. In this instance, it's 15.25 inches. In our next measurement, we're going to take and measure the front and rear compressed lengths. Now, a lot of people think that this doesn't look right, and this is where they really get confused, but this is the correct way to do this. We want to set the bike off the ground an inch and a half for cross country motocross and an inch for TT setups. The easiest way for cross country and motocross setups is to take a 2x4, turn it on its side, actually two of them, that way you make sure the frame is good and level, and put it underneath the bike. As you can see in this illustration that we did use 2x4s, Generally, TT, we're going to want it one inch off the ground. We're just doing this to be to show that you. this is how we do it with a 2 by 4 It's that simple. The wheels are sucked all the way up. This is where our shocks, we want them to completely bottom out at. We need these measurements. So to be able to calculate what our leverage ratios are and our extended and our compressed length. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take that measurement on the front. And from this picture, it looks like it's going to be about 12.75 inches. It's going to be our compressed length. We want it accurate as possible. Then we're going to go to the back. Again, we're going to measure from the top shock hole all the way to the bottom shock hole. And you can see in this picture, it looks like it's around 10.75 inches. It's hard to tell, but you'll have, you might have to stand on your head to even get the measurement. It's really hard to say. All right, on to our final. We're going to need a few more things from you, too. We get some boxes in. We don't know who they're from or anything. Please include the following. Your name, address, with phone number. Cell phone is fine. Where we can contact you. We want your make, model, and year of ATV. We want the shock linkage and brand. And that way we can calculate and we have knowns um, that will work and knowns that won't work. And we can give you a call and, and let you know what we think is going to work best for your application. Type of writing, for racing, 
Depends if you are racing. Could be a recreational rider. Really, we need to know motocross is generally going to be a 20-inch front tire. Cross country is going to be um, a 21-inch front tire. And TT, you're running an 18-inch tire. Also, what class you're racing, how advanced you are. You're also going to notice we did not ask for your weight. We do not need your weight, and the reason is we can calculate your weight by the measurements that you gave us. It's as simple as that. It's a simple leverage ratio formula. We can figure it out. We can figure out how much pressure is pushing on your shock by the measurements you gave us also, and it's a really simple and definitely the most effective way to do setting up your suspension.